Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Thank you for joining me. Today we are going to be doing some French Country Easter Pots using napkins. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. For today's project, we're going to be using these sweet little peat pots that I picked up on Amazon. I will link them below and I've seen so many crafts of people doing them and I really wanted to give it a go. To start, I am giving each of these pots a coat of Dixie Belle's Cotton Chalk Mineral Paint. You can see I am not working hard to get total coverage. I actually want parts of the peat pot itself showing through. I'm also painting the insides and we're doing three of these. Cotton is a beautiful bright white and it's going to be a great base for the decoupaging that we're going to be doing shortly. For our first pot, I am pulling apart a napkin that I got from a dollar store here in Australia. Whenever you get napkins and you want to decoupage, you do need to pull off all of the other layers except for the one with your pattern. Next, I'm going to be working out how much of the napkin I need to cover my pot. So I'm just wrapping it around just to work out what I need. And then I am not going to use scissors. I like a rough edge. So what I'm going to do instead is I am going to get my mister. I'm going to squirt some water into a plastic container. And then I'm going to use an artist brush to trace a line where I want to cut my napkin. And this is very, very absorbent. So I recommend going above the area where you think you'll need just in case it rips a little bit too much off. I'm decoupaging with Dixie Belle's flat clear coat today. So I'm going to get some on my brush and then I am going to paint on a thick strip of product so that I can begin to stick my napkin down. So I've got a strip there ready and I'm just going to position the napkin where I want it to go. And I'm going to be very gentle with this. I've actually never decoupaged with napkins before. You can see there I ripped that a little bit. Definitely something that you need to be gentle with. And I'm just going to work my way around the pot applying product and laying the napkin down. I'm not worried that I have a couple of little rips here and there. It's just going to add to the vintage worn look that we're going for here. I did find that I had less issues if I dabbed the product on as opposed to actually brushing it on. So I wanted to straighten up my design a little bit so you can see here I am just creasing and moving the napkin into position. Again, it's not going to be obvious that there's creases here when this dries. So I'm just going to very carefully position it where I need it to go and then lay the napkin down. I'm now going to come in and start carefully ripping off the excess napkin. The design wasn't sitting exactly how I liked, so I did carefully rip off part of the little rabbit that I want to be able to see. And I'll be able to just now reposition that back there. And uh, we're going to just pull a little bit off where we want the little rabbit behind him to show through. I'm just using the water to help with that. And that's the beauty of napkins and decoupage in general is that you can layer and change your design as you want it to pretty easy. So now I'm just going around and making sure that I have a good coat of the flat clear coat over the whole of the napkin and I'm just going to tidy up the edges, ripping off any excess napkins uh, using that water as well to make pulling it a little bit easier and neater. I'm going to sit this off to the side and get started on our next pot. For this one, I am actually using this lovely bunny napkin that I got from TK Maxx. You can see I'm pulling off the extra layers of the napkin. This can be a little bit fiddly, but you have to do this. Otherwise, it's just not going to work when you come to decoupage it. Now, I decided that for this one, I actually just wanted a single bunny. So I'm going to take that paintbrush and that water and I'm going to trace around the single rabbit that I decide will look best. And then I'm very carefully going to tear the design out. Mm -hmm. 
Now that I have my design, I'm going to lay down enough product for my napkin to sit on top of. I'm then going to very carefully tear the excess napkin off. Finally, I'm going to carefully dab on some more of my clear coat to seal in my napkin. For our third pot, I'm going to be using this lovely napkin, another one from TK Maxx, and it has beautiful bees and some beautiful yellow wildflowers, and I thought it would be absolutely perfect for some little Easter pots, so I'm pulling off the excess layers. Again, just be really careful when you're doing this uh, and gentle. You don't want to accidentally rip the design. So I am going to be using a whole section of this, so I am going to lay my pot down, work out how much I need, and then use the same method where I use the water to trace the line and then pull the paper apart. Then I'm going to repeat the same process as before. I am laying down a good coat of the Dixie Belle flat clear coat and then I'm going to carefully lay my napkin over the top of the product. And again, it doesn't matter if you have some excess hanging off, that does not matter. Now here, I decided to actually carefully rip it and then reposition the napkin so that it was a little bit straighter. So I'm going to lay down a little bit more product. And then once I have enough product in that gap there, I'm going to take the ripped portion and I'm going to very carefully lay that back down. And again, it always looks better if your joins are ripped and not straight. So you can see here, I am going to do a little bit of creasing to make it work and then I am going to very carefully rip off some of the excess. Something else I am loving about these napkins is that you can see through them. So you can see the texture and the different colors underneath where I haven't had full coverage of my paint. You can see those little brown spots peeking through. So now I'm just going to very carefully dab on some more product to seal my pot. Once I have the whole pot covered, I'm going to very carefully tear off the excess napkin down the bottom. I'm also very carefully pressing down any areas that may have come up a little bit and adding extra product where needed. I'll then set these pots to the side to dry before our next step. I'm now grabbing some Spanish moss. Again, this is something I got off Amazon. I will link it below. And I'm just pulling out a small amount that will fit in my pot. It is quite messy, so make sure you've got something underneath to catch the scraps. And I'm actually just using my scissors to cut the amount that I need and just popping it in each of the pots. Next, I'm going to work on some little eggs. These are some foam eggs that I got from a company here in Australia called Riot Art. I will link these below as well. And I'm just using Dixie Bell's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint to give each of these two coats. I'm going to have these two eggs in one of the pots and then a single larger egg in each of the other pots. I'm going with a lighter color today, but you could paint these eggs any color that you like. You could come in with some beautiful pastels, make them a robin's egg blue. Really, this is just open to however you want to style these. Once I'm finished painting these, I'll set them off to the side to dry. I want to give these eggs a bit of a speckled look, so I'm pouring some of Dixie Belle's Tobacco Road into a container, I'm watering it down with my mister, I'm then going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to just flick the paint onto my little eggs. So it's just going to give me a really subtle flecked look there and anywhere it's a bit heavy I'm just using my finger to tone it down. Again, if this looks not for you, you could try doing some other coloured speckles. 
Next, I'm going to use my hot glue gun to glue my eggs in place. So I'm going to start with these two little ones. I'm just putting a little dot of glue on there and then placing it in with the Spanish moss. I'm also going to add a little bit of glue around the edges of the pot to help hold our Spanish moss in place. I'll be repeating the same steps for each of the pots. So if this look wasn't enough for you, maybe you felt it was a little bit too plain, you could definitely come in with some feathers, maybe some florals. It really is up to you and the look you're going for. I wanted something a little bit plainer because the main focus really was on those beautiful napkins. I got to this point and decided I wanted to add one more thing. I decided to add some twine around the edges. So I'm adding a little line of hot glue and I'm very carefully wrapping some twine around the top and I'm wrapping it about three or four times around. I'm then adding just a little bit more glue and carefully gluing the end piece of the twine down. Definitely be careful here. I'm just using the end of a paintbrush for that last step. I am known to burn myself with a hot glue gun, so I definitely recommend being cautious. If this look wasn't for you, instead of twine, you could come in with maybe some lace or some ribbon. Again, this will be to your liking. Here are our finished Easter pots. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that thumbs up, leave a comment and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you're not already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find all of the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.